Mark's lovely to meet you. And you. At lovely setting. Yeah. Bit of London. Yeah, Can't. always good. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Now, let's talk about the Green Lantern. Very exciting. I did see it the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm very privileged. Um, your character, Thal Sinestro. I just want to get it right. Yeah, yeah. How was it playing him then? Uh, amazing. I mean, you don't get the chance to play aliens very often. <laughs> Although now the technology is caught up with the vision, there are probably going to be more and more of these kind of films. I mean, this year is superhero heavy, but... Green Lantern, the difference with this superhero movie is that they all go to outer space mm. and um, that's where Sinestro comes in. Yeah, and they're training, they're training the new guy. He's, Sinestro yeah. is very much involved in that. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of the hard taskmaster, yeah. the, the military commander <laughs> who doesn't believe that this new human can be part of this mm. intergalactic police force and gives him a hard time. Now obviously, yes, you are an alien. Uh, it involves lots of uh, makeup, lots of uh, C, C, I'm going to say CSI then. CGI. CGI, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. How, what was that like every day? Was it a long time in the um, artist's chair getting ready? Yeah, there was like, when we first did it, it took about 10 hours oh. to get it right. And then every day was about, about four hours. So I'd get up about three, get onto set about four, four hours in the chair, eight o'clock and mm. start shooting. But the really hard thing was the hour that it took to take off at the end of the day <laughs> when everyone was going home. Yeah. But it must have been exciting though, knowing you're going to be part of something really big like this, because this is going to be huge when it's out. Yeah, well it's more about the scale of the film that I was really excited by. You know, even though you go and shoot it in a, a big blue room, there's nothing there, it's all imagination and computer generated. The knowledge that I'd sit down one day and see that on the screen was the thing that I was really excited by and it blew me away when I saw it. Yeah, and you've got children, haven't you? Yeah. Well, are they, you know, is it going to be up their street? Are they going to enjoy this? Well, they, the, the three and a half year old is a bit young. Really young. The six year old loves the mythology of it, loves the whole ring, you know, the idea of the ring, the core, uh, all of that. But um, there is a scary, evil entity in it that um, you never know what six year olds take to bed with them at night and I wouldn't want it to become the stuff of his nightmares. It's true. And of course, this is not first major Hollywood film for you because there's been quite a few haven't there mm. I mean Sherlock Holmes yeah I liked you in that that was yeah. very good scary yeah. quite a scary guy yeah. uh, Robin Hood yeah what's it like in Hollywood well the irony is that Robin Hood and Sherlock Holmes were shot here yeah. and Kick-Ass was shot here yeah. and uh, there's another movie called John Carter which is a big science mm. that was also shot here and funny enough Green Lantern is the first time in all these studio pictures that I've been away for a while and we mm. shot it in New Orleans mm. So Hollywood itself, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've visited, obviously, many times. I go backwards and forwards. But I really like LA, you know. I love the weather, but it um, doesn't beat London. Oh, oh it's so nice. Well, it's true. Say. London is the greatest city in the world. Maybe London and New York are my two favourites. OK. But what's it like being part of that Hollywood set now, would you say? Because you, you are. Um, You're up there with the best of them, aren't you? It doesn't ever really feel like that, because we don't, always, we don't ever get together. Mm. You know, so you're just plying your trade. I'm, I'm doing the job that I love. And uh, I suppose I'm getting a very lucky opportunity to be in these films, which I never imagined that I would. But, you know, it feels good. It's where I want to be. I love doing it and long may it continue. Why do you think it is now that you're getting more and more of these roles? Because we, of course, we know you from TV, the stage here, our friends in the North, all those kind of productions, usual suspect. Yeah. Um, not usual, so prime suspect prime even. Prime suspect, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, why do you think now the parts are suddenly coming and they're, you know, they're in the big movies, the big blockbusters? What do you think it is? I don't know. There's a kind of trajectory that British actors of my age and probably before took, which was that we were all trained for the theatre. So we started doing theatre. And then if you were lucky, you would maybe break into television if you wanted to. And then if you were lucky, you would mm. break into movies. So there does seem to be this trajectory that, um, that I followed... Uh, but it's random, you know, it's not a meritocracy acting. You don't necessarily are good in something and therefore you get this. It's, it's, it's completely random and I've just been, um, I've been lucky to play a few characters that have caught people's imagination and, and uh, that's probably why. Is it a bit of a worry because it has been in the past that um, Brit actors going to America, we do get cast as baddies all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I don't mind that. I think that's a great thing. I mean, I, there's a great tradition of it. Anthony Hopkins, you know, Alan Rickman, Gary Oldman. I don't know what that is. I've asked myself that question. Maybe it's something to do with our accent, but uh, I think more it's in America, they're obsessed with the hero. That's part of their culture, the hero. Whereas over here, we're not frightened of the villains. You think actually Shakespearean characters like Macbeth, mm. Richard III, they're the villains. Mm. So we, we're not frightened of playing villains. Mm. Um, I find them kind of psychologically, weirdly yeah. 
interesting to, to create as an actor. So, that, that, yeah, lots of British actors go over there as villains, but then I suppose the trick is to, to try and find other things as well. Yeah. I mean, also, when you're looking at actors, other actors, you've got Dame Helen Mirren, Dame Judi Dench. I mean, in, in massive films, getting Oscars, getting Oscar nominations all the time. Do you think there's something about, I don't know, maybe Hollywood not recognising some of our best talent until they're much later on in their careers because they you know Helen Mirren didn't really get around the States until she was much older or, mm. you know much further along in her career do you think there's something in that, that well no look at uh, Andrew Garfield Robert yeah. Pattinson Kerry Mulligan you know yeah. there's there's a real uh, you know bunch of young actors mm. who are fantastic at what they do and I think they now realize um, that we're good at what we do I think what they love over there about us is that we're trained and I'm not sure, you know, American actors, they don't really get the opportunity to train for the theatre because certainly in LA there isn't really, there is theatre, but it's not, doesn't have the tradition that we have over here. So often I speak to American directors who say they love British actors because we turn up, it's a job, we hit our marks, we say the lines, there's no, you know, mucking about. We just, we get on with the job and that's how we see it, probably because we've got hundreds of years of tradition, yeah. of, you know, dating back to, you know, pre-Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah. Um, over there, it's a young country. It's a, they don't have that theatrical tradition. They're much more um, film orientated, which is about emotion and how whether you feel it or not. Whereas we are, I think, much more for us. It's a job. It's more practical. And alternatively, did you ever think that there used to be a snobbery when it came to British actors going over to America because it was almost considered dumbing down? Whereas now, it's there's not a problem. Do you mean that the British people thought that oh, no, actors British that actors went over? Just think, oh no, I don't make silly movies. I just, I'm just acting Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I definitely, um, I think there, there definitely was because, um, funny enough, Sinestro, the character and the look of him is based on David Niven. Now, David Niven is a bit of a hero of mine. Yeah, he's got this widow peak, little moustache. He was, um, he wrote these books. You know, The Moon's a Balloon, Bring on the Empty Horse. He's a great raconteur. And as a young man, I, I loved reading those books. And there was a real feel of old Hollywood because he went over in the 30s before it was really accepted that mm. British theatre actors would be involved in this newfangled thing, talking pictures. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Olivier was over there that time. Errol Flynn, although Australian, he was there around that time. But it was still a very fledgling industry and it wasn't considered to be the thing to do. Over the years, it became it, so the next few decades, film acting became acceptable. But yeah. yeah, there was a snobbery about it, but not anymore. Yeah. And, you know, now that you're in all these big blockbusters, you're still living in London though, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I would never leave London. <laughs> this is my home, you yeah. know, it's where I was born, it's where my family are from, and uh, yeah, I would never leave here. Yeah. So the idea is now, just try and get them to film, make the movies over here, because yeah. it's great for us as well. Yeah, well they do, They yeah. now they do. I mean, uh, there's something about, the studios to film in LA these days is very expensive. So there are a lot of studios over here, Pinewood, Shepperton, they're all full of uh, American movies. And yeah. in fact, Warner Brothers, who made um, Green Lantern, uh, and of course the very successful Harry Potter franchise have bought the studio that that was filmed in, Leavesden Studios. So there'll be a lot more American movies over here. Um, I'm, just, I'm really relieved when I met you, you didn't have those funny colour eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they would have scared me. <laughs> they were <laughs> hard good. to um, cope with. Yeah. Because the thing I didn't realise was they're coloured, so yeah. you can't actually but see completely, properly. Completely, because it's not like a normal contact lens, is it? It's just completely covered in. Yeah. So how do you... There's a tiny hole in the middle, and that's the bit you look through, and it's a bit like having tunnel vision. Yeah. So acting is quite weird with somebody because you can't really see them properly. Yeah. Just thought they'd just put it in afterwards, but hey, no, <laughs> not in post no, 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 no. I mean, all of that is so expensive that yeah. anything they can create in the camera is, uh, yeah. you know, what they're after. Make you, yeah, make you act more. Um, listen, it's lovely to meet you. And Thanks you so and much you. for this. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And, um,